The buffet on your cruise ship is not going to be the most glamorous place to eat, but that doesn't mean proper etiquette should be ignored. You're on vacation, you're serving yourself at the buffet, it's easy to not think twice about what you shouldn't do at the Windjammer. Pretty much all cruise ships have at least one all-you-can-eat buffet for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And on Royal Caribbean, the buffet is complimentary. And of course, for most ships, that's the Windjammer. An icon of the seas actually has two buffets with surfside eatery. But no matter which one you're going to, there are certain do's and don'ts you need to understand. And today, I wanted to give you a list of what to expect. Let's start with number one, and that is don't forget to reserve a seat. It's actually a really good idea when you walk into the Windjammer. One of my favorite tips is to find a seat before you start scoping out the food that's there. Unlike, say, the main dining room, there is no assigned seating. It is first come, first serve. And if you're not quick enough, you might have trouble finding and saving a seat. This is especially true for breakfast, which can get very, very busy. At peak times, it gets crowded and finding a seat can be a little more difficult. So my strategy is to look for a seat first when you enter and then go and get your food. You can use a water bottle, a book, a jacket, or even a child to hold the seat while you go and grab some food and then switch off and whatnot. Along these same lines, if you're having trouble finding a table, look for a crew member who's walking around. A lot of them are looking to constantly clean tables off and prepare them for the next guest. And they can also help out if you just can't find something. So if you see a crew member standing around or walking around trying to clear tables, that might be a really good place to start with and follow them and see if you can find a table after that. Number two on the middle list is something I honestly can't believe we have to talk about or remind people not to do that. But of course, don't skip the hand washing station. Before you enter, make sure you stop at the hand washing station to wash your hands. Nearly all Royal Caribbean cruise ships now have a hand washing station. On some of the older, smaller ships, there's not. And in that case, there's going to be hand sanitizer that you can use. Since the Windjammer is a self-service buffet, passengers in there are going to be grabbing and using utensils and serving spoons and whatnot. So washing your hands is one of the easiest and best strategies for ensuring that you mitigate the spread of germs to keep yourself healthy. Now, nothing's foolproof. I get that. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't take proper precautions and do the right thing. Speaking of the right thing, if you're not feeling well, really you should avoid the buffet. Instead, order room service to your cabin or have someone else in your travel party bring food back to your cabin. Something else I've learned from experience is don't dive in before assessing all your options. From salad bars to a variety of different hot dishes and desserts, the buffet have a seemingly endless amount of options to choose from. Before making any decisions, you should walk through the entire buffet to scope things out and see what's available. While one of the first things you might look at looks appealing to you, you can also find something even better somewhere else in the buffet. And if you fill up your plate too early, you'll likely end up wasting food. Moreover, options tend to change daily, especially for dinner. And if you're like me, you don't want to miss out. You're going to have that FOMO of going out there, grabbing a plate full of something, and then realizing, oh man, they didn't realize they had that other food over there. So... Don't get stuck to one option, but rather open up your taste buds and save room to try many different types of dishes. Another important don't is, well, don't waste food. Evaluating your options before selecting what sounds like the most delicious option is smart to ensure you don't waste food. Now, let me be clear. It's okay to try foods, and if you don't like it, not eat it. That's totally fine. The idea here is not to load up an entire plate of food you're not 100% sure on and then end up wasting it. Even if you feel like you will eat everything that you put on your plate, it's a better idea to start with one plate of food and return to the buffet for seconds if you're still hungry. Plus, you never know if cravings will change. Maybe that pasta you grabbed will satisfy your need for carbs and you'd rather get a side salad or vegetables later on. Rather than assuming you'll want three pancakes, eggs, hash browns, and fruit for breakfast, maybe start with what you know you'll eat. You can always go back and get seconds, thirds, and fifths. Avoiding waste is not only the polite thing to do, it's also a really good way to obviously cut down on general waste for the cruise line, but more importantly, ensure that you're also not overeating and basically just not being a glutton. Another really important don't you might not realize if you're brand new to cruising is don't reuse the same plate. Reusing your plate is a big no-no at all buffets, including on land anyway, because it can lead to cross-contamination and the spread of germs. If you're finished with your plate of food or just unsatisfied with what you got, leave your dirty dishes at the table and grab something else to eat. Crew members will walk around and clear tables so you don't have to worry about them removing the dishes yourself. I know what you're thinking. Well, I already have a plate. It's half empty. Why not, you know, help save on dishes being cleaned? This is one that's totally fine. Again, the issue is cross-contamination. It's not the thing to do. It's totally fine if you want to reuse the same silverware once you get back to your table. But honestly, in my opinion, once you go up to the buffet, grab a new set of silverware and a plate and serve yourself. 
Speaking of buffet faux pas, don't grab food with your bare hands. There are serving utensils available for a reason. Even if you just wash your hands and are sure they're clean, it's still considered impolite to grab food from the cruise ship buffet with your hands. If the roles were reversed, you would not want to eat food that someone else has touched or maybe grazed with their hand accidentally. Even if you want finger foods like chicken tenders or fries or maybe a bagel or a roll, something else you can easily grab with your hands, there are tongs available for you to place on your plate. Now, there is an exception, and that's prepackaged items like cartons of milk or yogurts that are basically, you know, grab and go as opposed to food that is coming out and needs to be served with a spoon or with a tongue. Another really important tip about the buffet is not to cut anyone in line. Everyone in the buffet is there for the same reason. Y'all want to eat and you want to grab food and obviously be on your way. So it's important to exercise patience while at the buffet because there are lots of other people who want, of course, try to enjoy their vacation and get their food too. Now, let's be clear. There are many different islands in the buffet and there aren't necessarily defined lines. But in general, you should not cut people off who appear to be waiting for a specific station so don't be afraid to ask if someone's waiting in line. This doesn't mean that when you first enter the buffet, you have to wait behind the line that develops at the first station and then follow all those people in. Obviously, you can go from station to station, and that's totally fine. What you want to avoid, essentially, is a line that's developed at a particular station, and you go around everybody in that line to grab something that's coming up at that same station. Essentially, it's disrespectful to your fellow guests, and you might actually interrupt the flow of traffic. This next tip is not so much a faux pas, but a really good piece of advice, and that is don't skip the made-to-order stations. Now, the buffet is great for all that food that's available for you to grab, scoop out of your plate, and be on your way. But even if you're looking for a quick bite, don't be afraid to place an order at one of the made-to-order stations. If you don't see something pre-made that sounds good, you can always construct your own fresh dish. While the cuisine itself usually varies, like there might be a pasta bar one night and a stir-fry bar the next night, you can rest assured knowing that not everything in the buffet has been sitting under heat lamps for hours and it's all custom made and some of the best food you're going to find at the Windjammer. The made to order station is a good compromise for those who aren't in the mood to sit through a three course meal after spending a long day short, but they don't want standard buffet food either. For breakfast, by far the best eggs you're going to find are at the made to order omelet station. That is a must do if you want eggs of any kind at the buffet. At dinner time and sometimes for lunch as well, there are going to be various made-to-order stations, including pastas and stir-fries and even crepes sometimes. So seek them out. They're really worth the extra couple of minutes for them to make your food for you. Another don't that a lot of cruise experts talk about is don't rush to the buffet on embarkation day. Now, one of the first places people go on a cruise is to the buffet to eat lunch. If you happen to arrive at an arrival time that's in the middle of the boarding process, you want to avoid the buffet for a little bit. The reason being is like everyone else is thinking the exact same thing. You're on board the ship. It's right around lunchtime. Bam, let's go to the Windjammer for lunch. While this is a good idea, the problem is the buffet fills up quickly and sometimes defeats the purpose of showing up for a quicker meal. Now, some cruise ships have different options you can go to without venturing into the buffet on the first day. On Oasis class ships, for instance, you can visit Park Cafe in Central Park on Embarkation Day. Over on Icon of the Seas, you've also got Pearl Cafe and the Aquadome Market as alternatives. Heck, you can just grab a couple slices of pizza from Sorrento's or Cafe Promenade and be on your way as well. By doing this, you'll avoid lines, be able to get in and out quicker, still have a lunch, and be on your way to be able to explore the ship and take full advantage of that first day on board. Something else really important is don't be afraid to speak up if you have food allergies. Food allergies can be life-threatening, and Royal Caribbean knows the importance of having allergen-free menus. If you don't see anything at first, don't be afraid to ask a crew member at the buffet. Now, in some cases, you can easily spot which items are available for you. But if you have any questions or concerns, really, you're not being a bother at all, feel free to ask. In many cases, they'll actually bring out the chef to talk to you about any specific needs that you have and be able to recommend things for you. And in some cases, actually prepare something if they're not sure that it meets your needs. And the last thing you shouldn't do at the buffet is wear a swimsuit or go barefoot. The Windjammer is definitely more casual in the dining room, but that doesn't mean there isn't a dress code there. What you don't want to do is go into the Windjammer in just your bathing suit, or a wet bathing suit, or either of them, or certainly barefoot. There are dress codes, you need to wear shoes, and in the cases of a bathing suit, you need to have a cover-up to go in there and grab food. Just don't assume you can go straight from the pool right into the buffet and grab something to eat. Dry off, throw a cover-up on, put your shoes back on, and then you can go in and grab something to eat. There you go. There are 11 things you should not do at the buffet on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship 
Let me know in the comments below what are the things that you definitely have seen other people do and what are your best tips and advice for enjoying a great time at the buffet. Let me know in the comments below. While you're below our video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know of a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.